Hello, Kiss Face Jr. Happy Sunday. We're going to continue worshiping at home. I'm sure a lot of you guys are starting to miss worshiping at church, but I just want to remind you that worship can be anywhere you go. It can be in the living room, it can be outside, it could be in the bathroom. Worship is anywhere your heart goes. And so with that, I hope that we can all set our hearts onto worship and we can do this together. All right, are you ready? All right, stand on up and we'll get started. Every good thing, every good thing, every good thing, every good thing. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in
what's next I wanna face this world with wonder and excitement Face every challenge every day
was great worship. Now let's follow along and say aloud the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He, has said, he, he ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, Christmas children, here we go. All of us. Are you guys excited to worship with me today? I know I am. Actually, this week, I've been thinking a lot about you guys, each and every one of you, especially those in my Kids Space ministry, and I missed every single one of you. I hope you guys are doing okay and safe at home. Now, I'm so thankful that you guys are here. And don't forget that we can worship God anywhere. And worship never stops. Worship is 24 seven. But right now, I wanna share with you a message from God. Hmm, what's today's message? I wonder what it could be. Last week, we talked about Moses. And the week before that, Jonah. I wonder what message it is. What can be after Moses? Is it Joshua? Mm -mm, you have to wait and see. But before we start, I want to play another game. It's called Guess That Superhero. How many of you guys like superhero? Me. You know, when I was younger, I used to pretend that I was a superhero and I used to put swords, hangers in my pants and whip them out. Yes, I thought I was a superhero. Now, guess that superhero. Now, hint number one, it has a black cape. <gasps> Do you guys know already? That's right. The superhero that I was thinking about is Batman! Da -da 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 Batman! Now, Batman is pretty strong. He has great muscles, pretty big. Look at his legs and even his cool boots. He's so cool and so strong. But do you know who's even cooler and even stronger? <gasps> That's right, God. God is stronger and bigger. Because you see, Batman, he made all of these things, right? But who's stronger than Batman? That's right, God. Batman could fly in the sky. Oh, but who made the sky? God. That means God is stronger than Batman. Sorry, Batman, I love you, but God's so much bigger and stronger. Amen, guys? Amen. Now, in today's story, before we start, it's actually found in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Now, I'm going to read this message. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. I'm going to read that again. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is the word of God. Now, 1 Samuel. Hmm, where is this book found? Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to play the Old Testament song. And I want you guys to see if you can find the book of 1 Samuel. I know you guys know where Jonah is and Exodus, because we've done that. But now we're going to do the book of First Samuel. And now in this story, I'm going to talk about in the land of Israel, there lived a prophet by the name of Samuel. Now, Samuel was told by God to go into Bethlehem, where he would find a young boy named David. 
God told Samuel to anoint David as the new king of Israel. He was supposed to replace Saul as king. Because Saul had turned away from God, God wanted to anoint a new king. But at that time, Saul and the men of Israel, including David's brother, oh, they were at a valley where they were preparing to fight against the Philistine armies. David traveled to the valley to bring food and supplies. He gathered all his food and all the supplies that he thought his brothers would need. He packed it and he marched and he stood at the hill. And when he got to the hill, he started looking over the valley. (gasps) He could see both army, the Israelites and the Philistines. And when David arrived, he found his brothers hiding from the scary Philistines army. You see, how many of you guys play hide and go seek? Mm, My kids do all the time. But this time, David's brothers are not playing hide and go seek. They're hiding from the scary Philistine army. The Philistines were actually great warriors and many in numbers. And for 40 days, oh, that's not 40, that's 44. 40 days, they've actually been shouting insults at the men of Israel, calling them cowards. Yes, in the Philistine army, there was a great man named Goliath. I heard he was super duper tall. And you see, he was big and scary. The scariest of them all in the Philistines army. And he was a giant. Now this giant, Goliath, was afraid of no one. He would challenge the men of Israel. Hey, you, come out. Let's fight. But everyone was afraid. They were playing hide and go seek. Day and night, Goliath mocked the God of Israel and the army of Saul. And while David was with his brothers, he saw Goliath come out and he heard the insults. (gasps) David could not believe all the insults that he's heard. (gasps) But David was a brave young man, one who loved the Lord. And he could not stand Goliath insulting God or his people any longer. Now, word's going to go around about David. And King Saul's going to ask for him. King Saul's going to say, David, come here. And with great courage, David actually goes and he tells Saul, Saul, I am going to fight Goliath. And now Saul knew that the Lord was with David. So he agreed. "Mm, You want to fight Goliath, my son? There, go. And Saul is actually going to clothe him. David with his own armor, his own sword, his own shield. Oh, but they were too heavy. Oh, they were too big and heavy. And David could not even walk. In the end, David decided, oh, I'm only going to fight with one weapon. The only one weapon that he knew as a shepherd boy, his slingshot. That's right, friends. He's going to use the only weapon that he knew as a slingshot. And now David, he went outside and he's going to pick five stones and he's going to walk towards Goliath. And at that time, like you guys can see at the screen, Dave Goliath is laughing at David. (laughs) You think you can defeat me, you little shepherd (laughs) boy? Yes. But guys, don't be afraid. The spirit of the Lord is going to come inside David. And he's going to give David strength and empower him to be courageous and brave to fight the giant. Don't worry, my friends. David knew he did not have to do this alone. So he trusted God to give him victory and give the Israelites victory. Now, friends, you'll see what happens. As Goliath charges towards David, David's going to shout something so incredible. Listen to these words carefully. You come to me with the sword, spear, and shield. 
But I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of the army of Israel, whom you defile. Mm. When Goliath heard the words of David and heard what God was going to do, oh, he was still laughing and taunting God. But David, he's going to take his slingshots, put one of the stones inside and start swinging at it in the direction of Goliath. He swings and he swings and he swings and Goliath is coming near and near. And David's going to release the stone with great force. It's going to strike Goliath in the head. Boing! Right in the middle of his forehead. And instantly, right at that moment, Goliath is going to fall to the ground with his face. And right moment, he dies. And on that day, God gave David and Israel the victory. Yay! Praise God! David ran towards Goliath. He's going to stand in front of his body and he's going to take Goliath's sword. And he's going to hurt him and end everything. When the Philistines' army saw this, they trembled. They were afraid. You see, Goliath was the strongest out of all of them. If David could defeat Goliath, they knew they had no chance. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, a little shepherd boy, he became a brave warrior who defeated a giant. Now friends, this story is not about David. Actually, it's about our Almighty God. Our Almighty God is able to defeat and win against all things. If David was just a shepherd boy and he had no help from God, It's impossible for him to defeat a giant. Now you friends, you guys can do all things through God who gives you strength. Amen? Now a lot of you guys are looking at the camera and I want you guys to follow after me. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen! You guys can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Even fight against a giant Philistine soldier who taunted the Israelites' army. Goliath Goliath hated God. But don't worry, he was killed by David. Because the shepherd boy trusted God enough to face Goliath, a giant and trained warrior in hand-to-hand combat. I pray that all of our friends will have courage knowing that God is always on our side. Amen? Amen. Let's all put our hands together. Dear God, you was with David and you gave him such great strength. God, we ask for strength every day because you can make the impossible possible. You are the almighty God, the one that is even more powerful than Batman and anyone put together. God, you are the one that created the heaven and the earth and help us to always trust in you no matter what and to not live in fear. We love you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. (gasps) How many of you guys stayed and watched the whole video? Mm -hmm. I know you did. Now, as we are ending, I'm going to ask for another question and answer time. That's right. This time, it will be David and Goliath edition. Now, last time we did Moses edition, and I'm sure you guys got how many of the questions right? (gasps) All of them? Wow. You guys are like geniuses. You guys are probably going to go somewhere really far in life, and I'm really proud of you. Now, today, let's do some questions. Let's see if you guys can put on your thinking caps and get ready for this week's edition. Now, question number one. Who did God tell Samuel to anoint as the new king? Too easy. That's right, David. Pat yourself on the back. Mm, mm, mm. You guys got that all right. And this one's actually a hard question. Bam, why do you think football players dump water or Gatorade on the coaches after winning a game? How many of you guys play sports? Uh, I don't. But I know that once they win, they dump water or Gatorade on the coach's head. 
Well, it's a little strange, but it's actually a tradition. It's sort of like a victory dance. Now, my victory dance goes like this, but I'm sure everyone's victory dance looks different. But in football, they like to pour things over people's head, and it's almost like they're pouring oil. You see, in the Bible, they would anoint oil on people's head, and this tradition was taken from shepherds. Did you know that shepherds pour oil on the sheep's head to keep all the bugs away from their eyes? A lot of you guys know sheep don't have good eyes. Neither do giants. But pouring oil on someone's head is actually a symbolic way of showing that someone had been called by God. And David was called by God. That's why Samuel anointed his head with oil. You guys are doing too good. Question number two. Who were the men of Israel preparing to fight? <gasps> you guys said it already. Oh, pat, pat, pat. The men of Israel were preparing to fight the, is the Philistine army. That's right. So, next question. How do you prepare for a game or performance? Well, usually, athletes usually warm up their muscles. And actors, they actually, you know, warm up their voices. And dancers would practice their parts and dance. But you see, the men of Israel, the way that they prepare to fight against the Philistines' army, well, they would prepare hard with their swords and knives and spears. And they were always prepared for the coming battle. That's right, friends. Are you guys catching up? How many of you guys got all those questions right? Me! Oh, you guys are too good. Next question. What did Goliath challenge the men of Israel to do? Too easy. Pat yourself, because I already know. Goliath challenged the men of Israel to come out and fight. Like a rumble. How many of you guys watch wrestling? Da -da -da. They would wrestle each other and they would ask for a throwdown. That's what he was asking for. Now I have a question. How many of you guys have pet peeves? I have so many. Now you're probably wondering what a pet peeve even is. A pet peeve is actually something that irritates or upsets you. You see, sometimes they're very minor or sometimes they're not. But you see, when David heard that the Philistines and Goliath was insulting the men of Israel and God, he became very angry. Anger is a response that was given by God. But you see, anger at this time, because he was angry about their taunting and all their inappropriate things, it's emotion given by God, but we must be very careful in acting on this emotion. You see, David's anger was justified, and his response was very appropriate. But sometimes anger is not appropriate, and I pray that our friends will have wisdom and know the Bible to know what to do. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. <gasps> what did David tell King Saul he would do? <gasps> Too easy. David told King Saul that he would fight Goliath. That's right. He had the brave, he was brave and courageous enough that he told King Saul that he would fight against that great big giant. Okay, we're going to go to another question. When playing baseball, would you rather be a pitcher or an outfielder? Ooh, that's a tricky one. You see, pitchers get to play a lot more than the outfielder. But an outfielder plays a very important part, especially on the baseball team. If someone on the other team gets a really good hit and there's no one on the outfield to catch it or field the ball, the other team could score really easily. You see, taking roles of responsibility, you see, is an effort that the whole team or group has to do. And that's being a really good leader. You see, all the men of Israel, they were afraid of Goliath. But David heard this man disrespecting God, 
and saw that there needs to be something done to Goliath and his blasphemy. So David, he stepped up as an outfielder. He caught the ball and he won victory with God's help. Amen. Amen. Next question. What did Saul give David to wear in battle against Goliath? Oh, this answer. You're cheating. You already see it on the board. That's right. Saul gave David his armor, sword, and shield. Just pat yourself. Just give it a pat. Yes, next question. Have you ever wanted to go on a ride at an amusement park, but was too short to get on? Oh, that's such a bummer. But the height instructions are actually in place of our safety. You see, King Saul's equipment was way too big for David, and it would have been ineffective in battle against Goliath. Because there was no armor that would fit him, David would have to go into battle with the only armor that can protect him. What do you think that is? The slingshot? No, close. It's God. You see, God was the only armor that can protect him in battle. The best armor in existence. I pray that you guys will just take grab. God, mm, thank you, God. Be my armor, be my shield, be my sword, be my everything. Amen? Amen. Next question. When David walked towards Goliath, what did Goliath do? Oh, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember. Now this one could be easy, <gasps> but I see you guys cheating at the screen. You already see it. The answer is there. That's right. Goliath laughed at David. Oh yeah, you guys know that one so well. I'm gonna ask you another question. What is something that you're good at that might surprise others? Ooh, that's a good one. What are you guys good at? Maybe you're good at dancing or singing. But whatever it is, God isn't surprised by it. He knows your talents and abilities. He knows everything all about all of our friends. That's right. Ooh, I like the next question. How many stones did David pick up? Now, if you guys listen very carefully, I hope you guys did, you would know that David picked up five. That's right, he picked up five. And that goes to my next question. Have you ever killed a fly with the fly swatter? Oh, flies are very small, bzz, and they are fast, and they're very hard to hit with the fly swatter. And sometimes it takes a several swings. If I want to kill a fly, oh, I don't have good aim. I'm doing it all day trying to catch the same fly. But David, he flung a stone at moving target and hit him right at the right spot to take Goliath down in how many shots? <gasps> I'm already holding up the finger. One shot. This is pretty unlikely outcome. But with God, that's right, it's possible. Like I said, all things are possible with God. Amen. Next question. What happened to Goliath after David hit him with the stone? <gasps> um, what happened again? Did he cry? Did he dance? Was he tickled? Mm -mm. He was not tickled and he was not crying. The minute or the second that David hit him with the stone, oh, Goliath fell to the ground and he died. Yes, right at that moment. We know that was God. Last question. If David had relied on his own strength and his own abilities, do you think he would have beaten Goliath? <gasps> oh no, he probably wouldn't. Without God, David was just a little shepherd boy with a slingshot standing in front of a huge warrior. But with God, he was victorious. He was almighty because God helped him. I pray that you guys will always remember 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. Yes? Yes, he does. 
You see, man, they can't look inside your heart. Oh, can you see my heart? You don't see what's inside. Can you see my thoughts? No. But God actually does. He sees your heart. He sees what's in your mind. He knows everything, even your thoughts, even before you say it. Man look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. I pray that you guys would only care about how you look on the inside and how God perceives you. I pray this week you guys will have such a blessing week keeping all the promises that God has given to you. And I pray that you guys will always be victorious like David. See you guys next week. Bye. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Joel, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free. A gift for you, for me. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free A gift for you, for me